Hello guys, uh, I am very happy to stay here and I have a big challenge. Uh, I need to give a good talk for a week before after lunch. But so I will talk about culture chains use Zabbix in Kubernetes. Uh, in Brazil, I um, have some customers then the needs using Kubernetes for another applications, and uh, because why don't use the Zabbix in this environment? Okay, uh, I am Robert Silva. I am certified Kubernetes administrator, Zabbix trainer, and Zabbix expert. And uh, I have a good question. Does Zabbix work in containers? Maybe uh, when has the hands when uh, using Zabbix with containers in our production? Okay, good. Well, uh, I started using Zabbix containers two years ago, and I talked in the, another Zabbix summit, and in this link have um, more details for this architecture, for these uh, presentations. And uh, some people ask for me, uh, this environment working yet? Maybe yeah, maybe no, but let me see for us. Uh, here we have... Uh, Zabbix information, and we have more than 50 hosts monitored in this environment, and uh, more than 11,000 new values per second. And uh, in Brazil, it's a big environment. And uh, uh, the better part of it, we have over 100 proxies without any SSH connection for maintenance. Uh, yeah, using Zabbix with CI CD proxies. Okay, yes, and the Zabbix works with container, but we do we still have environments in virtual machines. And it's a good point that some customers have uh, uh, problems and don't understand how two containers work and on other points. But I have a need to change this culture, or maybe because I have a lock knowledge of containers. But this topic is another moment. Today, I won't talk about the benefits of the Kubernetes. My goal is answer questions about Zabbix working in Kubernetes, okay? Uh, I have some challenges, but Zabbix has hundreds of integrations, how to like AWS, Azure, Regis, MongoDB, and another integrations. But for soft engineers, cloud engineers prefer Prometheus because it's cloud native. It's I have a problem or we have uh, offer Zabbix for this environment. And I think we Zabbix experts must show that Zabbix is prepared to work with modern technologies. I come most it for the world. It's Zabbix, not uh, simple solutions for uh, infrastructure, for servers, for virtual machines, for database. We can use Zabbix for monitoring uh, our applications modern, okay? and. Service discover and low level discover working together is awesome. We need to enjoy it. Okay, let's start. How to start working with Kubernetes? Maybe you need some requirement skills. Uh, the basic Linux and the networks and the basic shower scripts, distribution architecture is very important, and the right availability architecture and the how containers work. It's very important to understand how to working, okay? And the uh, container orchestrations like uh, DocSwarmer, Kubernetes, and OpenShift. So CI CD process is very important. Don't need, uh, I have uh, some components working in Kubernetes and they uh, have manual action for deploy it, for upgrade, or for rollback. And CI CD is a good point for it. Okay, the first step when start working with Kubernetes, we need to understand what resource we need to deploy Zabbix in Kubernetes. Kubernetes have some components, how to like a config map, volume, secret, but what I need for just working for Zabbix. Uh, and another point, we need to create a isolate environment for development, homolog, and productions, and separate and split this environment, it's a very important. And uh, it's recommended to have two clusters, okay? One cluster for your development and the homolog, and then another cluster for your production. Because you can change it and uh, try some solution, some functionality uh, with broken your production environment. Okay, 
we don't need a dedicated Zabbix cluster, just need dedicated nodes, nodes and we can enjoy uh, the existing uh, environment, this Kubernetes in your com company or in your customers. Okay, and the, you need to define how to deploy will be done. For example, you can use GitLab, CI/CD, Argo, CD, Harness, Azure Developers, and another technologies. Okay, Kubernetes objects. I have some objects, how to like uh, uh, namespaces, deployments, volume, config map, ingress, and the services. But for basic objects to Zabbix, all you need for Zabbix servers, just a deployment, a secret for uh, define your credentials for database, for example, and uh, add service, okay? And uh, for Zabbix front end, you need additional uh, component. It's the ingress for access, ac external access using uh, the browser for customers. And for Zabbix proxies, you need to change the deployment for stateful set object, okay? And the, how does ConnectFit working when um, using Zabbix in Kubernetes? You need a dedicated database out of the cluster, okay? Maybe a database as a services or in virtual machines, and you need to deploy your Zabbix service. And the, this pod for these components connect with your database. And the, for the Zabbix front end, we have the similar connection with database. And the Zabbix, Zabbix front end connect with the Zabbix server uh, using service address. Okay? It's very simple. And for external access, you need additional do two components and the natural and nginx ingress controller for uh, um, proxy reverse for example and the ingress resource okay and the ingress resource are like as virtual host is in apache for example okay and for the zabbix proxy you can deploy using kubernetes you need just to connect with the zabbix service using servicing address okay and the, in some Situations we have, we need connection external in the Zabbix server for some integrations or for uh, Zabbix proxies that out of clusters. And for it, we need a external load balancer. Okay, uh, it's a simple deploy the Zabbix server services uh, using type load balancer in Kubernetes. Okay, and the, uh, there are two ways to deploy the Kubernetes. I have uh, come using manifesto files. Okay, and it's simple. Um, file are using Helm. And this Helm, I can have, here I have some example for these files. Okay, and when deploying in this environment, use a manifest file. You need write some files for develop environment, for homolog environment, and for production environment. But it's not good because you need change just parameters, but need management several files. It's maybe it's not good, okay? And the how to improve it? Uh, you need to use the package manager. When talk about uh, Debian or Ubuntu, we have APT. And uh, when talk about uh, Red Hat, CentOS, Oracle Linux, we have DNF. And for Kubernetes, we have the Helm. They'll have package manager for deploy in objects in the Kubernetes. What is Helm? I know details for it. My colleague talk about more for it. And the basically, the Helm is the package manager for Kubernetes. And they provide a reserve and facilitate server a single point of control. You create a package, and this package you can change some parameters, some variables, and enjoy it. Okay, and uh, you, you can use Helm for rollback. Maybe we can increase some parameters and the, these changes broken your environment. With just command, we can roll back our environment. Okay? And the, when deploy using Helm, it's more easy. We have the Helm and the, some Helm chart deploy for develop, deploy for homolog, and deploy for production environment. Okay? Uh, how Helm works? Helm is based on template files. You need to create uh, template files and define your values files. Okay, here we have some example for it. Um, in this, how define how many replicas, 
how many resources you need to use, it, and hardiness problems, and liveness problems, and another point. And here, eight, eight parameters you are replacing. For example, here we have val dot values dot speak dot resource. If you if you define, we can replace. And uh, another options for using Helm. Okay, and the uh, solution flow flow for it. I have some technologies involved. We use Git, GitLab, CI/CD process. Maybe we can use Argo CD and Kubernetes or OpenShift. And they have a best practice for working with the branches when working on Git, okay? In my case, I use GitLab CI CD and the GitLab for remote repository, and it's very important to enable protect branches and the tags. It ensures to keep stable branch secure and the force developers choose a merge request. Okay, and here I have a GitLab example where you can access repo, settings, repo start, and define the protected branches or tags. And here I have an example for it. I have branch for developing and branch for homologging, and define that just maintainers can merge, okay, and don't permit push directly. And another example for using production environment, you can use protect tags, okay. So, here I have a basic flow for CI CD using GitLab. You are Zabbix admin and you access your folder and you need a folder with Git enable and they chose the branch, for example, when I need to change some parameters, I create a new branch. For example, uh, insert a new script for alert scripts, a new script for external scripts, or simple change some parameters for Zabbix. And here we make your changes, write your files, and the commit for your remote repository. In my case, I use GitLab and create a merge request. Oh, okay, I need uh, the sum of changes in my environment and I define it in my computer, send it to a remote repository, and my colleagues approve or know my changes, okay? And then when merge request is, is approved, I have start the pipeline process. In the pipeline, we have two stages. Uh, the single stage for build your custom images, for example, uh, the Zabbix offer all components, uh, Docker images, but these components, uh, maybe it's not completely. For example, you need the monitoring database, and the image for Zabbix proxies don't have drivers installed. And then in this moment, I can make it, okay? And the, the second point, we have staging to deploy, and deploy your environment. And here, I have some examples when using GitLab CI CD. In this simple example, I have two stages, the build, the prod, image, and deploy the, 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 the prod environment. For example, two jobs run in just one minute. Here, I have another example where I have some stages to deploy. And here, in this case, uh, I have seven jobs and just one minute. Okay, it's very uh, easy, it's very faster when we need a uh, man maintenance at the big environments. And now I have another example with uh, several jobs in just four minutes. And uh, I think if I need connected in 100 proxies, how many time I need for it? Oh, okay, I use Ansible, but I have several time for it. It. In here, I have a good example. In five minutes, we can start it, drink a cough, and it's working. Okay, uh, here I have some codes when using branches with GitLab CI CD. Here, I defined a stage for build container. It's very important you become dynamic CI CD process. You can use some variables like as uh, user macros in Zabbix. I ha uh, here, I define the repository name, the branch name. It's a, a good point. I don't need to define, oh, it's for deployment. I don't need to create uh, some if-else oh, for, for production, for homologue, or for develop. We can using the branch name. And here, define uh, and identify the branch name and make this process. And here, we define when this stage should be run. In this case, just develop and homologue. 
Uh, another code for it, here I create our YAML anchors for define the all steps to deploy. And here I define connections in the clusters and some variables in the another point. For it, just a template when working with YAML. Here I have some example for deploy. For the example, develop and homologue. I have a reference to YAML anchor, okay, and the, this connects and that's different namespace in the OpenShift in this case, okay, and the, it's the variable define environment stage. And you can you just need what when environment you are deployed in this process. Okay, and here it's very important because uh, in GitLab, for example, you can define uh, where this variable working. For example, I have three namespaces and each namespace in its uh, specific branch and specific environment. Okay, uh, and here another example for it. And uh, now I have example for deploy. Uh, for deploy, referencing to uh, YAML anchor again and define some points and my script to deploy. It's a simple script that uh, Hamo, Realm, upgrade, install, and define some values. Here I have result for these processes. It's several deploy points, and uh, it deploy just 13 seconds. It's very faster for maintaining your environments. Okay, and uh, I have some benefits for using Git. And the first Git, you have all centralized environment settings, such as external scripts, alert scripts, and the ODBC files, and the all configuration parameters, for example, the cache size, the value cache, pullers, and the others. Oh, my cluster Kubernetes is broken, not problem. In your remote repository, we have all information for this environment, like as infrastructure as a code. It's a very amazing. And uh, I have, uh, uh, we can view how change it. For example, who change it, and uh, what you change it, and uh, because it changed. For example, my colleague needs increase some parameters, and they can see our history for it. Okay, and I have some benefits for using CI/CD. For example, no manual intervention. You just uh, change your parameters in your computer, send it for a remote repository, it's working. And they have automatic Docker image builds and the updates, and the automatic setup process. It's very amazing uh, working Zabbix uh, with our developers and other applications. Just it use our process Git flow. Okay, guys, that's it. Any questions? <laughs> oh, uh, it's very important for me, and uh, I would like take a picture with you. Okay. Uh, Maybe hands the hands, please. Hey. Oh. <laughs> right, and, uh, thank you very much, guys. Enjoy. I am available for sucking and answer our question for you. Thank you very much.